did you know that CrossCode has mods? The modding community is small, but there are quite a few mods out there at this point. The game doesn't have Steam Workshop support, but there is a community mod loader that is very easy to use. This video is going to be a quick guide on how to use it. The first thing you need is a PC copy of the game and to back up your save files. You can find these by typing percent app data percent in the search bar and pressing enter. Go back out of roaming and click on local. The folder called crosscode is your actual save files. Just make a copy of this and rename it to crosscode vanilla. This way you have a backup copy in case you ever brick your game using mods. This is a precaution that you should take when modding any game, not just crosscode. Next, you'll need to download the mod loader itself. The GitHub link in the video description will bring you here. Go ahead and download the source code.zip from whatever the latest version is at the top. Don't worry, I promise this is the only manual install step you'll need to use mods. Once it downloads, find it in your downloads folder and extract it. The next step is to locate your crosscode game directory. This is where the game is actually located on your computer. If you own the game on Steam, you can right click, go to Properties, Installed Files, and click Browse. This will open up your crosscode game directory. Note that I don't personally own a Steam copy of crosscode, so I'm using another game as an example here. Once you have your game directory open, go into the mod loader files you extracted until you see the actual files. Select them all and copy. We're going to go back to our crosscode game directory and paste them here. Make sure you say yes when it asks to replace the files. At this point, go ahead and launch the game to test. A good indication that it worked is the initializing CC loader at the start of the loading screen. Once the game loads, you should see the CC loader version in the bottom right of the title screen. That means the install has been successful. Now that we're done, we don't need to keep any of these CC loader files anymore, so you can go ahead and delete them. Okay, now it is time for some mods. Go into the options menu, and there will be a new tab with a hammer icon. This is for mods. You'll have two mods installed by default, which are included with CC Loader. The checkboxes on the right are used to enable or disable individual mods without physically deleting them from your game. The two mods included here should be always enabled though. And if you make any changes in this menu, the game needs to be restarted for it to take effect. All right, now for the button at the top center of the screen. This is the fancy mod manager, which was created by Crypec, and it contains the vast majority of mods made by the CrossCode modding community. They are all here in one big list. The stars on the right are basically like upvotes on a mod and allow you to see which ones are more popular. There's a button at the top you can use to sort by popularity, by name, or by date updated so you can see which mods have been worked on most recently. There's also a button at the bottom to filter by mod categories. So for example, if we click PVP duel, these are all the mods that include custom PVP duels. If we go back and set it to player character, these are all the mods that contain custom characters you can play as other than Leah. These should help you narrow down the giant list and see what each mod has to offer. Back in the list view, when you hover your mouse over a mod, you'll see that the visit repository button appears in the top right. When you actually press that button, it takes you to that respective mod's GitHub page which is where the mod author has provided a description of what the mod contains and how to actually access it in-game. Well, most mod authors provide a good summary anyway. Going back to the star upvotes on the mods, to add a star to your favorite mods, you can just click this button on the GitHub page, but only if you have a GitHub account though. The mod manager also has a pretty handy search bar at the top. You can search by mod titles or even author names. So here, for example, you can type in my name to see all the mods I've worked on. Okay, that should cover how to find mods, but let's actually install one. Elemental Hair is a pretty popular one, so let's open the repository. You should always check out the repository for any mods you install, because the mod author will actually tell you what the mod contains. This one changes Leah's hair color based on the element you're using. So just click on it, and then the Install Mods option will appear at the bottom. Click that. You'll see a summary. Hit Install, and that's it. It'll prompt you to restart the game, which you should press. Once we're in the game, go back to the options menu and you should see your new mod added to the list. The vast majority of mods are compatible with old save files and don't require you to start a new game. Load up one of your existing save files and you should immediately see that the elemental hair mod is in effect. This is pink hair in the shock element, red hair for the fire element, and so on. 
This mod even changes your portrait sprites due to the element that you're currently in. And there you have it, the elemental hair mod has been installed. The last thing to mention is that some mods have dependencies, which are other mods that they require to function. For example, the pet parrot mod here requires the item API mod. All you have to do is select the pet parrot mod in mod manager and the item API mod will automatically be installed alongside it. When we launch the game, you'll see that item API, which is a dependency for pet parrot, has also been installed. And there you have it. If you want to fully delete a mod instead of just disabling it with the checkbox, go back to the mod manager and look for the enabled tab. These are all the mods that you have currently enabled in your game. Click on one and hit the uninstall button and it will physically delete the mod file. The last thing I'll mention is the physical location of your mods. In your game directory, if you go to assets mods, each folder here is your physical mods. This is where they get downloaded when you hit the install button in the mod manager. You typically won't need to do anything here because the mod manager handles it all automatically, but if you ever do download and install a mod manually, this is where you'll put it inside this folder. And that's about it. If you'd like to follow the development of certain mods and stay in the loop, I have included a few Discord community links in the video description. Again, the community is pretty small, but there are a handful of active mod authors always working on new things. And with that, I'll say good luck out there. There's quite a few crazy fights in some of these mods, and you're going to need it.